So hello there, today I would like to show you something from my Prosopocoilus Girofa K2K um, breeding process. What you see here is a 5 liter glass jar with kimchi of special tropical Pleurotus oyster mushroom. It's a, you can see probably from the color here, it has a rose pink uh, touch. That's also why it's called the flamingo oyster mushroom or the scientific name is Pleurotus Jamor or Pleurotus Salmoneo Stramineus. This is a very nice mushroom for the breeding of our tropical stack beetles. Why? Because the temperature range of this mushroom goes between 25 to over 30 degrees. So it can stand very hot temperatures, whereas normally the oyster mushrooms, the European temperate oyster mushroom, they don't stand temperatures over 25 uh, degrees mostly they are uh, they really like more the cold temperatures so this is a very nice tropical mushroom and now if you see what the larva of Protopocoilus giraffa did you can see sometimes it made a channel here you see the structure of the mushroom mycelium growing in the mixture of beech and oak sawdust here you see the tunnels of the larva and here you see, you see a clear track where the larva went down from the top, ran through here, up there, up here, and so finally we found the larva here. So today I want to just take it out um, and show it to you. This mushroom is an edible mushroom. If you like it and you harvest it fresh, as long as it really looks nice and pinkish, then it's a very nice mushroom also to eat. So if you don't use any chemicals inside of the, of the sawdust, what I wouldn't do anyway, so you can eat this mushroom. It's a normal edible mushroom. So this also, we can take out these fruit bodies here. Look at this really nice structure of this mushrooms here are the young ones coming out and these when they lose their color uh, they get a little bit older they also release a lot of spores so if you keep them one day on a table like this you will see it's covered with a white pow whitish powder so that's the spores that are released by this mushroom and here is on the side of this flamingo mushroom So now let's see whether we can dig out the larva. So we put the kimchi, uh, I prepared the kimchi in a big box, 100 liters plastic container, then I pressed it into this 5 liter jar. The whitest thing here, you see, that's the spores that I was talking about just before. So where the larva is, I just want to show you how big it is now. We only put the males in this big uh, Charles, why? Because for the females that are a little smaller, it's enough to give them at around two or maximum three liters of kimchi, and there they can grow very well. But the males, they are really hungry and they can become really big. And now it's the larva is trying to dig down here, you see it? So, if, probably not that easy to take out here. It is. Okay. Oh, this is a beautiful one. And also, and also, you will see that they can become really big. Uh, that's a larva of Prosopocoilus girofa K to K. That's from the island of Lombok and Flores in Indonesia. Oh, and let's see how heavy they are now. Now this is 26.6 grams. Now sometimes um, it's better to check for humidity because the mushroom as it grows, a fruit body, 
it will lose a lot of uh, humidity and water through the fruit body itself and it can suck out all the water of your kimchi and that's probably not always good for the larvae because they need some humidity too so now here I add some water just on top of the of the kimchi and it's also easy to check because you should never see a drop of water on the bottom of this kimchi glasses only the substrate should be wetted a little bit so that it's not drying out and also then you can see that the mushrooms start growing again and of course later they try they will make some more fruit bodies too and then after you checked for the humidity here put one uh, deciliter of water in you can just put the larva back and then of course cover it with the rest of the kimchi material you don't have to cover it to the top because the larva is going down and dig into the compressed kimchi here and for the lid to cover you can use uh, this original glass lid with a little space between the the lid and the, and the glass jar so that there can be a little aeration here but mostly they don't get out of the glass not at this moment so and that's it uh, we will come back and see what our nice larvae of Prosopocoilo skirofa do in around one or two months and then I want to show you something else I also prepared some of these five liter uh, boxes with the same material and also here you can see these nice mushrooms coming out of course here you know also when they are so dry then it's a good sign to check for humidity probably they also have sucked out all the humidity from the kimchi and it would be good before you present it to your larvae to add some more uh, water also you can check this with the hand and I say here I would add uh, two glasses of water to the kimchi so before I put in um, the larvae and before I put in the larvae of course I dig a hole or I compress it or I, I so where the larvae can dig down into the to the kimchi and here in this box I would like to put two females and the females I have in this in these boxes here here you can see that the old kimchi that was in here already is used up completely so you don't see any you don't see any of this whitey stuff anymore all the mycelium of the mushroom uh, is gone and then it's mostly time to change the substrate now let's see what it looks like here oh here we already find here we already find a pupa of a female but I have to take out this little piece of skin here so and then I try to keep it a little bit now probably you can see it here yeah here you see the the pupa of a female of Prosopocoilus giraffa in this box. So what I do, I remove here part of the part of the things under. Then I add some thing of the stuff of the dry material here. And then I put it in like this so that the female can emerge here. I think I can remove also part of this top thing here. And there are some signs of, uh, of mushrooms here on the top too. So I probably changed the lid so that we can have a a little more aeration here like this 
Now let's check another one. Here I also don't see a sign of a, of a lot of us, though mostly this is a sign also that they already have pupated. So let's have a look here too. Sometimes you also feel it when you press to the material where it's completely compressed you can be sure that there must be something like a uh, here you see a hole that must be the chamber but I don't see a now here's a very small larva I think this larva is isn't healthy anymore it seems to be filled with the fluid completely sh shining through so that is not a sign of a healthy uh, individual so this one probably I would not put back into this kind of substrate probably I put some of this on the top here but I would guess this uh, larva will die because she doesn't seem to be vital anymore it's, it's kind of a fluffy feeling and it's not moving it could be also a, f a male the size of the head seems to be from a male but so uh, we have to check later what was going on with this larva it can happen as you know also if you're breeding if you're breeding beetles sometimes we have not always we have good luck sometimes the conditions are not right completely and then it can happen that you did that so also here that's clear here's a pupil chamber and I just open it to show it to you I try to oh here I think this is the opening here yeah but what you see here is a larva preparing the pupil chamber. Yeah, and of course we will not disturb it any more longer here. From the size of the diameter of the head you can guess that it's a female because the males are much bigger than 10, 12 millimeters. So let's back the lid like this and then we just so I think we have it either in the same situation as we found it before and also this one goes to the plate and wait till they emerge Well, let's see whether we find a larva of a female here. They all seem to be pretty far in their development. Here, that's probably it. Yeah. That must be. A, yeah, this is a, a small. This is a female. So now, it's also a smaller one. If it's 11.4 grams, that's not really a big one for Protopocoyus giraffe. I just prepare the box like this, put it in here, so we can dive down. And if you want, you can put some of the old material on the top of it, but most of you don't really need it because they have their gut loaded with. Uh, their bacteria that they take with them. So I'll probably have one more to here you see that's from a here you see the material of the kimchi eat being eaten up and the traces where the larvae went through the kimchi. Let's see where she is now. Also this seems to be a smaller one. Yeah yeah that's it. Voila. And also here you can pr probably put, this is a bit bigger, so it's around 15 grams, or oh, 22 grams, yeah. Also this could be 
a male on the side of the head uh, capsule here. So if you have an, an aggressive male in hot temperatures, they can bite you very severely in, in the finger if you don't pay attention. But if it's a little bit cooler temperatures, so they are not that fast. So you don't have to be afraid. And before you want to handle them, you should cool them down a little bit, but not too low, because under 15 degrees they don't really like it. So, and then, I, normally I wait till they have dived down into the substrate and then I cover it with a, a plastic lid with only some holes like this and with the tape I close it. So, please come back, we can see what happened to them in around one, two months and I have another check. Thanks for watching. Thank you.